four of the VTOP series. The VTOP brings to you the most prominent voices of the HR leaders who are donning the change makers hat at their respective organizations as they share their precious experiences and insights on and around the HR ecosystem. So joining us today is Ms. Radhika Gupta, Head HR, Beckton Dickinson Technology. A quick introduction about her before we start our discussion today. So Radhika comes with around 17 years of rich experience in business partnering, talent development, talent management, and building organization culture. Her experience spread across IT, financial services, as well as healthcare industry. In her HR leadership role, she has successfully partnered with diverse global stakeholders and is quite passionate about ramping up organization and strengthening the culture at the same time. With that, a very warm welcome, Radhika. Looking forward to having a really interact interactive discussion with you today. Thank you, Besaki. Same here. Look forward to an interactive discussion. Sure, Radhika. So to start off with today's discussion and to more or less set in the context for our discussion today, uh, my first question for you would be, as we know that there, there is an ongoing talent war, right? It's nothing new. It's going on for quite some time. But if I uh, focus on your specific industry, according to you and your industry demands, what type of skill shortage do you think is causing this talent war? Sure, I think you covered a, you know, a major part of the answer in the question itself, Besaki. This is nothing new. This, this war for talent, I think one of the biggest challenges for organizations over the last many years has been to get the right talent into the right role. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and for that, there has been always competition. There has been an endeavor to get nothing but the best from the industry. So the war for talent has always been there and will continue to be there in future as well. Um, you know, pertaining to my specific industry, I'd say this is also common across industries where, um, you know, there is a constant change in the technology. There's a constant change um, in, in, you know, technology is changing very, very fast. And as a result of that, we always see that we need people who are, who are the pioneers in technology, especially and in software. So, uh, you know, the, the, the way uh, softwares are being developed today across the apps are being developed today across, you know, everybody's looking at software developers, they're looking at mobile app developers, you know, the whole gamut of it, front end, back end, full stack, all these, I would say, resources are currently high in demand. And therefore, it is creating that war for talent, because um, the demand is too much and the supply continues to be limited. Uh, that and then I'd say also in the you know IT architecture uh, kind of a setup, we would see you know like let's say platform solutionists, people uh, you know who can provide the entire architecture, IT architecture for organizations, uh, you know especially in, in in niche areas like SAP, S for HANA, uh, MuleSoft, Hybris. I would say these are all niche skills, and anyway the the, the supply of these skills is limited, so the you know, and, and the demand continues to be there. So um, these are some areas I feel there will, even in the near next few years, continue to be that uh, war for talent, so to say. Thank you for setting in the context and uh, painting a very realistic picture pertaining to your industry. And as you mentioned, going forward, how you envision it to be uh, gradually panning out. Uh, so, uh, Radhika, when we talk about organizations, the first thing that comes to our mind, especially in today's time, is employee engagement, right? And keeping in mind how things have rapidly changed for the past few years, I'm kind of curious to know that, you know, when it comes to your employee engagement strategies, uh, especially when we talk about remote as well as hybrid work setup. So, what is your take on that? How do you see that? Yeah, I think um, as a result of COVID, the expectations have changed both at the employer end as well as at the employee end. Uh, uh, if we say, you know, things go back to the pre-COVID times, that's not how it's going to happen. Uh, therefore, the organizations need to be more agile in terms of building their hybrid model. 
for us personally at BD, I, I would say we we are following the hybrid model where associates are expected to be in office for three days and they can work from home for the balance two days. Uh, you know, we find it extremely, uh, I would say, the optimum arrangement where associates not only when in off, during their in-office days, they come to office, collaborate with their fellow colleagues. You know, we have a very, very state-of-the-art facility here, Pesaki, and, you know, they come and really constructively collide with each other. The kind of ideas one generates when one meets, uh, you know, their colleagues in person is, is unmatched. I don't think it can be done as much over a Teams call or in virtual setups. So um, that's our take on hybrid. That's all. We are also kind of following this in line with our global guidelines around the flexible working model, so to say. And those two days, you know, like two days of work from home, the associates can utilize to plan and schedule their meetings with the global stakeholders holders and really be flexible in terms of their times. Now, in order to kind of keep employees engaged in this hybrid setup, we make sure to provide differentiated benefits to our associates as well. So at BD here in the technology campus, we provide home pickup and home drop to associates. You know, there are office cabs and they get that. We also provide breakfast and lunch at the office facility. Um, we, we kind of try our best to continue to create an environment where uh, you know they feel happy and charged about coming to office including I would say flexible working hours you know there's no fixed time for them to come into office or to leave office they can decide and plan their coming in and leaving out time based on how their meetings with the global stakeholders are scheduled and you know work accordingly to achieve that so I think uh, one uh, you know, clearly specifying uh, what kind of a work arrangement are we providing? And two, uh, creating a lot of additional benefits and facilities for our associates to, uh, to enjoy, to kind of make sure that they are delivering their best to the organization. I think you touched upon a very important point that, you know, our employees being happy and most importantly, looking forward to come to work. And uh, mention not, I believe, uh, you know, time and again, we have been saying this, that no matter how hybrid remote we have gone, uh, calling it the future of work, that particular touch of human element meeting with people, I think that uh, holds a very different, uh, you know, uh, depth altogether, which I believe no amount of virtual connect will be able to, you know, bring forward to the table. Uh, so moving on, uh, Radhika, if I may ask that another very crucial point that you know organizations have started focusing on with a very uh, serious agenda that is uh, the diversity and the inclusion part. So can you throw some light on how as an organization you are focusing on that? Sure, and I think it's 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 a concept that has been existing for years now, and it is it will continue to gain momentum till we reach an ideal state, probably a utopian state. But um, for us also at Beckton Dickinson, I think diversity we we encourage diversity across, uh, you know, different genders, ethnicity, etc. Practically for us, closer home in India, uh, you know, for now, our focus is to make sure that we have the right representation of our women associates into the workforce. So for us, you know, a very important element of diversity is gender diversity. Uh, and, you know, we are, we are kind of in our, um, in our workspace dealing with it in three different aspects. The first one being uh, getting more and more women associates into the workforce mix. And for that, we take a few conscious steps, including, you know, when we go to um, engineering colleges across the country to, to hire our young talent, we also consciously make a choice to go to all women engineering colleges and get, you know, more inflow of uh, women associates into our engineering mix. Uh, you know, that's one. Uh, when when we are hiring, we, there is a clear mandate to our TA team to make sure that there is a fair representation of women candidates into our slate. Uh, so like this, we are kind of making sure we are also leveraging a few 
I would say women uh, forums to kind of hire candidates, hire candidates from there. So, uh, you know, that's that's our focus on making sure that we are consciously and deliberately bringing more and more women and at least, you know, eventually reaching to a 30 to 35 percent women representation, at least in our in our workforce mix. A second aspect is uh, development of these women associates. So when they join us, you know, what are the opportunities we are providing? to them to grow and build their career at BD, right from, you know, networking opportunities with their local and global partners across to, you know, we have this session called Chat with the Purpose session, where uh, some of our, uh, you know, global leaders, women leaders, they talk about their journey with our associates here in India and truly end up inspiring them. Um, you know, so th th we've recently, you know, about to launch a mentorship program exclusively for our women associates uh, that will enable them to kind of discuss about their development goals and accelerate their, uh, you know, development uh, with help from some of our, again, global uh, mentors from across. So that's on the development piece. And last but the most important, I would say, our focus has been on continuing to build an inclusive culture at BD. So it's not just about bringing women and, you know, empowering them to do their job better. It is also about making sure that they feel welcome. Our leaders and managers are equipped to, um, to kind of uh, get rid of any kind of unconscious biases and make sure that they are truly accepting of, of uh, this diversity at workplace. So from time and time and now we have, you know, sessions for our people leaders on unconscious biases, for example, you know, we have discussions with our uh, leaders on how to continue to become a more engaging and, you know, welcoming uh, organization for our diverse workforce. So I think uh, in that space one i would say we've come a long way in the last four years of our existence as an entity and of course there is a long way to go as well so we continue to focus on this and make sure that we have a local win team uh you know at bangalore in 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 our organization that um ensures to continue uh, doing more and more to get more you know to to build an inclusive organization overall Lovely to know how as an organization you are actually walking the talk when it comes to diversity and inclusion. As, as you mentioned that uh, you have come a long way and there is yet yet a lot to cover and especially when we talked about the uh, utopian state of mind. So I believe there are a lot to achieve for all organizations as we keep on talking and keep on progressing uh, with the time. Uh, so Radhika, we have touched upon employee engagement, we have touched upon uh, diversity and inclusion. So that kind of leads me to another very interesting point, which we can't simply uh, you know, miss nowadays, that is uh, talking about the new generation of workforce. So uh, what's your take on the new generation of workforce? Uh, and how do you see their expectations differ from that of the previous generation? I would love to know that. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the talk of the town also, Gen Z and entering into the corporate world and the kind of disruption they're about to make in the corporate world and organizations need to be agile to be able to, I would say, manage their expectations. Um, you know, but... but uh, Personally, for me, Besaki, what I believe is that every generation that comes in is different from the previous one. And I think that's also a kind of a natural outcome of human evolution. You can't expect two generations to be the same. And it's the same in the corporate world as well. So, uh, you know, when, when now the Gen Zs are coming in, for them, I think it's, you know, they are much more, I would say, outspoken uh they would not hesitate talking about speaking up in the organization which to me is a is a great sign because you know typically organizations have really uh, i would say focused on building a culture where associates can speak up and talk about what they're liking what 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 is not working especially in the projects etc so that we can we can mitigate those challenges early on rather than having them linger on so uh that's 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 something that i see as a 
very, very welcome change in this generation. The second one, I would say, in my in my opinion, would be their savviness with technology. I think their easy adaptation to technology. This the the ways of working are going to continue to change with more and more technology coming into practice. And this generation seems to be comfortable with technology. They've grown up with you know mobile phones and um, uh, you know the latest technology, latest softwares. Uh, I would I see that also as a very welcome change in terms of you know, organizations finding it easier to adapt to that technology and leveraging a lot of this workforce to be the pioneers in implementing some of the transfer te technological transformations in the organization. Now, one thing I personally feel, you know, the organizations will need to really uh, focus on is also their expectations, you know, um, uh, you know, how previous generations used to consider one organization as their family and they would spend uh, eons, you know, working in that one organization to, of course, then uh, they're coming more awareness about around personal growth and, uh, you know, exploring other organizations as well and working in multiple companies to grow your career. To now, I think uh, this generation will be a mix of also kind of, uh, you know, looking at not having anything probably permanent, you know, wanting to do uh, jig assignments and uh, wanting to kind of focus on, I would say, uh, multiple careers as well. So how do organizations prepare themselves for this challenge is something that will be interesting for, you know, all of us to kind of embark on that journey. I believe you have actually pointed out quite some interesting points and uh, uh, listening to you, what I feel ultimately boils down to a point where, you know, the different generation comes together, as you mentioned at the beginning of this session, that how different generation comes together and the mix and match pattern as to how they work together and overall contribute to an organizational growth. I think that's something, you know, organizations need to re-strategize and need to ponder upon. Uh, so, uh, Radhika, this kind of brings me to my last question. And uh, this is kind of a very interesting question that we have for all the leaders who join us for the series. So, more than 17 years in the talent acquisition space, I believe you have plethora of, uh, you know, experiences to share with us. But if I boil it down to some of the most prominent challenges that you have encountered in the TA space in this journey, and most importantly, what were your strategies to overcome them? So if you can share something with us. Oh, that's a quote. I don't think anybody's been able to crack Besaki, including me. I think uh, all organizations still continue to uh, focus on um, you know, making sure that they're reducing their time to get the right talent uh, in the you know in the right time. Uh, there are challenges that every organization faces, including us. I, I would say starting with the first one: How do we make sure that we get the right person into the right job? Now, by this, I know. Not just mean you know having a skill set match I also mean you know alignment of you know values individual values to organizational values I also mean uh, being passionate about the purpose uh, of the organization that one is getting into for example I want to talk about BD as an organization you know we are advancing the world of health uh, you know, our organization's central purpose is to make sure that, uh, you know, we are we are bringing positive outcomes to our end customer, which is the patient as well as the healthcare worker. Now, we would definitely want to focus on associates who are equally passionate about healthcare industry as much as we are in, make, in making that difference to the healthcare industry. So, you know, getting that right mix where it's not just about, I would say, skill sets being matched and someone comes and does a nine to five job and, and that's where, you know, it all ends. We want it to be the beginning of the journey for that associate where he's he or she is pas passionate about uh, truly making changes to the world of healthcare. I think that for us is a um, constant endeavor and the ways we kind of handle this is through our employee value propositions you know various stages of the interview giving clarity to the to the candidate not just around what the job entails but the larger purpose of the organization and constantly talking about that purpose to the candidate I think that for us will be a first challenge and at the same time our strategy to mitigate that challenge uh, now the other one I would say which is kind of linked to this only 
is also around candidate commitment you know own commitment um this i i would say last year uh, would have seen some some of the the maximum number of offer drops across different organizations you know candidates uh, the the job market was ripe and candidates were kind of exploring different opportunities uh, i don't say there's anything bad in that besaki my only thing is that uh, you know one of the challenges is what am i committed to am i committed to money am i committed to a good role am i committed to a good organization i mean if we do end up getting that clarity from uh, you know the candidates i would say it would make everybody's job easier including their own and um, i would say that of the organizations then you know one does not spend time on pursuing candidates who have their larger interest elsewhere uh, similarly candidates don't spend their time pursuing organizations that are not meeting their primary motive whatever that could be so uh, you know not showing up for interviews as a result of that just exploring casually all of these things i think and these are i would say challenges that we continue to deal with and i am not sure what is the right solution for that yet paisaki but then you know through our uh, i would say initial pitches and evp employee value proposition to the candidates we try to make it very clear that you know we are here to uh, look for passionate individuals and if if this is not something that's your cup of tea this is not the industry that you're keen on this is not the work arrangement uh, you know you would be keen on 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 following then i would say you know you decide for yourself and make the best use of your own time and that of the um, you know organization as well so i think here are some broad challenges and how we kind of continue to deal with them like i said this is a code no one's been able to crack and it's a learning journey we continue to embark ourselves on i think uh, it's very important as you mentioned that if the uh, you know the candidate is also very clear in his or her mind as to what they actually want to achieve it kind of it's a very win win situation for both the parties both for the uh, candidate as well as for the person who is actually investing time in hiring this candidate so i believe you know a day comes very very soon when uh, candidates also do get a chance to open up and a very frank communication starts happening starts evolving at the uh, you know uh, hiring space so that you know it becomes a much more uh, free flowing conversation when it comes to this uh, hiring scenario uh, so with that uh, we will kind of wrap up our conversation for the day thank you so much radhika for sharing your fantastic knowledge with us and i did not mention that i really loved conversing with you today and gaining some really insightful knowledge from you uh so for our audiences once again thank you for joining us today we will be back with yet another exciting conversation very soon till then keep talking everyone